Primavera otra vez en las tierras del sur. Las primeras lluvias se filtran en la tierra con un crepitar que desprende olor a nuez, insinuando aromas de hojas frescas e inertes y de viñas anegadas. Regreso para encontrar al mismo grupo. Siempre vuelven a las mismas tierras, se despiertan a la misma hora, cazan, comen y luego pulen sus herramientas. Casi nunca salen de su rutina, aunque a veces se dan a la violencia frenética, pero aún así existe una especie de ir y venir predestinado en estos incidentes. Hasta en los momentos más tediosos, los humanos poseen una gran intensidad. Corren hacia su fin y se apresuran, como si no lo hubiera. ¿Ya os habéis convertido en uno de ellos? ¿Me necesita? He venido para asegurarme de que no os acabáis perdiendo la reunión de hoy. ¿Alguna vez me ha perdido una? Sí. ¿Alguna vez me ha perdido dos? <risa> Debería empezar a estudiaros. Tal vez entonces descubriré qué os hace estar tan obsesionado con este grupo en particular. Antes os rendiría este aburrimiento. Nosotros, los mayordomos, le vemos una majestuosidad expansiva a la vida. La inspeccionamos cual halcón que vuela resplandeciente muy por encima de las nubes. Pero hay una belleza única en el apego humilde. La intensa admiración por el más pequeño detalle. En una especie concreta. Una familia, una sola pareja, una intimidad que arde como un haz de luz. No puede ser eclipsado por la visión de mil viveros vistos desde lejos. So this film was actually inspired by the J.A. Baker book, The Peregrine, which is really a collection of journal entries by Baker about his time spent observing uh, peregrine falcons in 1960s England. He was so obsessed with them that he would just take to the fields and the lands around his home and track them, write about them. The journal entries are beautifully written. They're, they almost border on poetry at certain points. But that idea that someone could be so hyper-focused and in love with one thing to the point that it, it seemed to consume them was really what attracted me to this narrative. So I wrote this story about a higher life form obsessed with this particular group of humans. I'm Glenn Navaris. I'm the cinematographer and VFX supervisor for the film. My brother and I actually talked about doing this film in 2019, way before we started working on it formally. We went through different versions of who the characters were going to be. Eventually, we settled on 16th century Spain because it was a location we don't see a lot of, especially in short films. The project actually started with a box of pizza with me, um, 
Glenn and Sean and Alex uh, in my dining room. Pre-production was like any other shoot that I work with the Vivirus Brothers. It goes to a roller coaster of uh, <laughs> being creative and trying to think about logistics. Hi, my name is Kimmy Martinez and I was the customer wardrobe for this beautiful production. So I was approached <laughs> because I was working, uh, I work at a puppet theater and I had just created these puppets uh, that were of Shakespearean time. So I had to uh, investigate and look up all these different uh, Shakespearean uh, dresses. When Sean and Glenn started um, talk to me about the colors and how it was going to be shot and the distress uh, of what they were looking for in the costumes, it grabbed me. Uh, the time period wasn't fully set at first, but I always wanted to do a period piece my brother suggested, why not Spanish conquistadors? And I said, great, I really love the, the look of the armor. We also really love the idea of juxtaposing this icon of power and conquest with an otherworldly power. So, you know, what if the conqueror was actually the conquered, right? Uh, so when I was sent some images for um, the time period and what they were trying to capture, I instantly thought of the broken picture by uh, William uh, Adolphe Bavaru, I believe is how you pronounce his name. Um, I thought of that image and I thought this is, this is uh, what the peasants are going to look like, the mother and, and the child. And plus I thought of the Man of La Mancha, <laughs> which was also all these beautiful distressed materials. Even though we had a decent budget for this, it was still nowhere near the budget most people would try to attempt for a project like this. A couple of us actually pitched in in uh, helping uh, weather down some of those props. It really felt like a intense long sprint. I gotta give a lot of credit to Kimmy, our costume designer, for getting everything done on time. And of course, my brother. He did all the custom prop work for the film. We knew we wanted a vintage, older feel to the film, so we could really sell the reality of it to the audience. We decided to give it the look of film stock, but film stock can be really prohibitive, especially for a tight budget to shoot on. So it was digital, but we also shot small samples of 35mm Kodak Vision 3 film. And we actually matched the two to try to get as close as we can to the look of celluloid film. And we tried to make sure the VFX had the same tangible feel. Hey, I'm Alex Delphine. I play the main character in Conquistador Azul. I was looking for a creative project to jump on board with and produce uh, when Sean Vavaris told me about a script he'd come up with. So during pre-production, we gathered an ensemble of people who could help out with the language. Hello, I'm Carolina Espinosa. I play the character Yona. The reason I was so excited to join uh, was because I also studied linguistics uh, in college. Um, it was nice to be able to speak my language, uh, and so I just have a real passion for language, um, and especially film. I think it's important that you know folks watch films in the language it was filmed in. Hello, my name is Olga Molina, and I'm the script supervisor and dialect uh, supervisor as well for the short film Conquistador Azul. And we started working on it last summer. So in the pre-production, I talked to Sean Vivaris, the director. And as linguistics is my field, I had to make sure that the Spanish in the film sounded as natural as possible and as period as possible. But we also had some room uh, to, you know, play a little bit with the accents because the characters, they are not from this world. There's a twist there, so we, we had room to play with it. My name is Vasilisa Badeka and I played the daughter of the hunter. And I prepared for the role, so they gave me a sword and I practiced with my sister all the type of moves. So filming was really cool. We went to a remote location in the mountains. It was the middle of summer, so it was hot. And um, I, you know, the other characters who were in full metal garb, I felt so bad for them because it was very hot. Um, but it was fun, it, you know, it felt we were immersed in the moment, in the time. So we were really fortunate to find this really beautiful place up in the mountains. Uh, to fit all the criteria that Glenn and Sean have. That was actually the perfect place to shoot. We got everybody all the way up. It was a off-road dirt trek, basically, up the car. So 
That was kind of hard, finding out the location, getting everybody to the same spot on time. Uh, and then once we did, there was fleas everywhere and it was, uh, you know, challenging to actually hike to the spot where we needed to film at. The whole thing was really amazing, but I would say the filming, because I love the energy being in location with the rest of the team there in that precious location that we had for ourselves in the nature, even though it was hot. <laughs> it was super hot, but it was really, really cool. So that was my favorite because I like feeling the energy of the people. A few days, a few days of that was, uh, you know, it was pretty tough. Even the uh, director's camera blew up by the end of it <laughs> because he had so much dust particles inside. Uh, so at the end, you know, when we saw the finished result, it was totally worth it. You know, there's there's so much room for interpretation and there's so much room for imagination. Um, so seeing that come to life was absolutely incredible. Period pieces and fantasies probably my favorite genres to do. I would love to do more of them, but you know, most likely at a, at a much higher budget so we can all have AC. Uh, but I'm really proud of how the film turned out, so I think it was all worth it in the end. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our short film. Hope you guys enjoyed the film.